you are listening to the Schmooze! Hello! Hi! And we are on, on the Schmooze! Yay! <laughs> We get so excited. We do, we do, we do. Each week, it's like therapy week. And those who are not joining us, I'm so sorry, but you're missing out on a week of therapy. <laughs> Free therapy. Um, today, we are talking about love. Yeah. I, I have to say that um, I'm so glad that we had this to look forward to after last week, because yeah. after, especially after Tisha Bell, because it was just like such a down and then you need like something to bring you up. Right. So it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant that you suggested it and absolutely brilliant of God <laughs> that he decided to make this holiday right after Tisha Bell, So you have something to go up to and look forward to. Yeah. Um, we were talking about Lucy. I love oh, Lucy. Lucy and the love. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Which one did you like the best? I think both. It's not a con it's not a contest between them. Okay. I mean, of course, I love Lucy. I think is um has much more qualities. Uh, love boat is pretty uh, pretty shallow <laughs> to begin with. Right. It's fun. It's mm. like it's like popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough, <isn't> she? <laughs> I mean, you can take it in and take it in and take it in, but it's only popcorn. <laughs> Good one. I like it. I like it. I think there's something classic about I Love Lucy. The, the, yeah. they, she can make me laugh, and she was like before my time. And, yeah. um, and you know, there, there's so many issues where it's it's so relevant so prevalent today and and it's interesting that they were married not only in real life but also on screen meaning they spent 24 hours with their spouse would you be willing to, would you be able to do it i doubt it <laughs> and especially because you know on screen they were you know, taking all the stuff that happens between couples and making it to the extreme. Right. So on one hand, it's really fun. But on the other hand, it really, you know, sometimes it's like really painful, I think. You know, like mm. the scene, like he always like reads behind the newspaper and he ignores her and she like throws the toast at him and he catches it. <laughs> Right. But that depicts like uh, something real, even though today, like the guys are not reading in the newspaper anymore, they're, they're down on their, their cell phone, but they're also, they, they have a, like this ability to detach themselves. Right. Going and, into the man cave. Yeah. Sitting next to you and they're so totally detached, totally uninterested in what you're saying. And that's till this day, it's very relevant. It happens all the time. And to have that you know, like right before your eyes again and again, all these conflicts that they put on stage, right. uh, that because that's, I think, the essence of the show mainly right. is the conflicts that the couples have, but they still have this love going on. They do. It's, but to be fair, to be fair, I'm also with my phone. Like, you know, yeah, sometimes me too. to be fair, to much be fair. more, I think, than my husband. <laughs> it just, he doesn't seem to care that much that I'm. <laughs> We're going really deep here. Uh, <laughs> I think I think during Corona, uh, we were all home. Yeah, and it, it was nice. You know, we we built this like nice family time together, and 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 whatever. And then everybody was home, and it, and it was it was nice. And then after Corona, it was like, okay, everybody get out of my face, just get <laughs> out of my face. Like I, we did it for a while. Um, Jacob was home, and I was home, and we were running the business together, and it was fine. And then it was like not fine. When mm -hmm. it's fine, I think when it's fine, it's it, it can be beautiful. There are couples on the show yeah. that work together. Yeah. Um, and you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and I think when it works, it works, it can work yeah. because you're you're both dedicated to that same goal. But when it doesn't work, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. So I'm um, I think on a whole, I'm happy that we don't 
work together. Even though if we found like a common ground, we might, but I'm on a whole, I think I'm grateful you have yours okay. and I have mine. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing I like about I Love Lucy is that like uh, they come from different backgrounds and uh, me and my husband, we come from very different backgrounds. <laughs> And uh, it's like some things that are clear to me are not clear to him at all. And um, you see that very strong on the show, like the way of thinking, the way of doing things. Uh, it's not only men versus women. It's also different cultures, cultures right. versing each other. And I think that was like very, very um, new at the time to see someone on, on screen, <laughs> Spanish, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, is very prominently Spanish. Like, right? the, right. not, not, not trying to be like the American right. way. No, he's like proud <laughs> of his culture, right. or proud right. of his way of doing things. And, and that's another thing that happens a lot in marriage is because, it's a, it is a clash of cultures, even if you come from the same culture, I think. Yeah, Kovene. It is. Yeah, Kovene. Because people are raised differently, different houses, different mindsets, different upbringings. Right. And, uh, and when you get married, that's when, like, everything meshes. <laughs> <laughs> You try to like to put it together and something sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work and you have to like right. sometimes I feel like I'm rocking the boat. <laughs> sometimes I feel like jump the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and this yeah. is Yaakov and I, both Ashkenazi. Both my mother and his mother grew up in the same house. <laughs> you know, like if you guys have issues, different cultures. We grew up like, you know, yeah. it should be the same thing, but no, my husband is Yemeni, part Yemeni, part Parsi. And I remember when we first got married. So my mother-in-law, she's so sweet. I really love her today. But then she she really, I, I felt like I was blowing up each, each time. Every time we would walk in the house, what do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? And I'm saying, I told her, listen, if I feel comfortable, I'll take by myself from the fridge. And then every time we left the house, she would like shovel all kinds of food at us that we have to take and then i i was like really insulted like i don't know how to cook what's the problem or, or you know we're so poor we don't have food in the house <laughs> and it's a culture it's a, it's it's a culture thing. thing it's a culture yeah. thing totally but finally like i changed my mindset i would walk in the door and say what is that to eat <laughs> And then you became the loving <laughs> daughter-in-law. Yeah, I mean, it took us time. And we mm. also sat and had, a, like, I remember a really serious talk, like, in the beginning of the marriage, because I felt, like, all these bad vibes coming from her. Mm. And I sat down with her and I said, you know, I feel like you're blaming me that I stole your son. And she said, well, there is something. <laughs> <laughs> she was honest. And, and, she, was honest. Honest. and she said, my mother did the same thing to me <laughs> oh my god oh my god and, and once we had it out in the open so so then it was things got a little better and over the years it got much better today mm. she like she i love her forever mm. and today uh, god willing i'm gonna bring her here so that i can take her together and get her to be a princess mm. and come with us so wow yeah <laughs> So we'll see how, how that holds up. <laughs> <She's ready>. um, <laughs> but I, I think that this is also part of being married, right? that you have in-laws to deal with, and you have like uh, a bigger family to deal with. And the show didn't show much of their bigger family. It was more like themselves and the couple, the friends. The friends, right. But still, you know, it's it's beautiful in my eyes. All the comics right. stuff that's going on is hilarious. It's sort of great. slapstick that you just it kills you <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I think that like you know today people don't appreciate the value of humor. It, like you say, oh, I want a, a, you know a husband like this or a wife like this. No, 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 no. And they have a whole long list, but people don't appreciate the fact that 
you need humor in life. Yeah. And without humor, you can be the best guy in the world, best woman in the world. But if you can't laugh at life's troubles, it, in my eyes, okay, in my eyes, I've said <laughs> that humor is something very important. Um, yeah. And I, I loved, I loved the fact that it was, they were very loving on a deeper level. And I think maybe that's the difference between love and romance. Maybe like on the love boat, it was more like romance, like like you said, shallow, like um, on, a, on, a, on a surface level. But they had like a, a deeper love going on and it was right. through the years, you saw it like deepening and deepening and deepening. Um, let's talk about the difference between love and romance. Okay, great. So let's take, wait a minute, the, the love boat for okay. a second as a, as a, something to take off from so the love boat has a lot of romance on it okay. and um it's not only the passengers that have a romance between them right. sometimes it's the crew members the crew. and there's yeah. the um the doctor who's like a womanizer hmm. and he's like i think it was the wrong typecasting for the part <laughs> He doesn't look like it, you know. They always put all these women around him, and he's like so dorky. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's funny. So anyway, so there's always like this uh, romantic tension, mm -hmm. and um, it's the the eyes, it's the I think the sexual innuendos. Uh, but it's also uh, romance is a, a lot about intimacy, about getting close. So? Yeah, yeah. About, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Well, you can't ha be really romantic without getting closer to somebody. And um, a lot of time what creates the romance is that somebody's vulnerable and somebody's listening to them or giving them help in some way. And uh, there's also this type of romance that you can adore somebody from afar. Right. That's also, uh, also uh, you know, you can see that also in Love Boat. But I think the difference is that love is something that goes on, on like more on a daily basis. It's something that's more consistent. It's not just, you know, in romance, you have these romantic gestures. You have this stuff that goes on like, uh, <laughs> is Boaz romantic? Sometimes. <laughs> Who's more romantic, <laughs> you or Boaz? I don't know. I think we both have our own moments. Uh, when we met, he was very romantic. Yeah, he was very Tell me about a time when Boaz was romantic. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'm not going to okay, throw you out okay, to the bus. Okay. Okay. Um, so, when, I think when we met, it was the first Shabbos that we met and we were together. So, like, he was so tentative and very close and very, I, I don't know how to put it in words. It wasn't like a big romantic gesture, but it was like, like the same, I'm here with you. Aww. And, you know, we, we looked in the albums of their wedding, of our, our cousin's wedding. So we were there for Shabbos. And, uh, he, and he saw me in the pictures and gave me compliments. He said, I wish I would meet your dad and stuff like that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and we had a lot of times, you know, every time when we look in our eyes. But even like yesterday, we went and I, we had like a really weird date last night. We were supposed to go on a date and then for like two and a half hours we were on the phone with his siblings for what to do about his older parents and so we found ourselves part on the conversation part in Kabbalah Rachel when we went to pray and then we went to a restaurant and they were closed and they said you can only take take out so we were waiting for the takeout and then he 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 takes my hands and he looks me in the eyes. Aww. So that's like such a beautiful romantic gesture. It is. You know, it like, is. That's we're waiting beautiful. for a takeout. <laughs> that's nice. But but we have a few moments for ourselves. So that's very romantic. Yeah, that is. I think love is part of that. I think it, totally. it's not like love versus romance, because I think 
you need romance inside sure. love. For sure. But love means more than romance. <laughs> but it can't be, it can't just be dependent on it. Right. It can't just be dependent on, and you can't have love without romance, but you can't have, um, and romance leads to love yeah. ultimately, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you can't have one without the other. It, it like can't builds have together. one without the other. <laughs> What's that one? Love. And oh love. my God. I hated that show. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> I hated it. They were so dysfunctional. Yeah. And they were so mean to each other. Yeah. Like the husband and the wife and the wife to the daughter and the son. They were so, it should have been like a nice show, but it was so, they were so mean to each other. They were yeah. so, ugh. Okay. I guess we're not going to talk about that show. <laughs> <laughs> we can. <laughs> okay, so, so let's talk about uh, you have to tell me a romantic. Ah, story. okay. Um okay, so this was years. I mean, it's not like he's not romantic, he is romantic, but wait, like and when I think about an episode that sticks in my mind, so um I was pregnant and it was hot. It was really hot, and I was pregnant and it was really hot. <laughs> and at the time we were living in Harbor Ha, and I was going to your slime all every day. Wow. And the road to begin with is up and down and this way and that way. And um, I was um, I was throwing up. We always say we left Harbacha because we ruined so many people's cars. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and it, <laughs> it was really hot. And I said to the driver, this is like Summit Big Ill, when Summit Big Ill wasn't safe to stop at. Yeah. And I said to the driver, I said, stop the car now and I don't think he heard the now part and I just missed and I and there I am I don't deal well with vomit and there I am I'm covered with barf and we get out of the car and I'm, I'm and Yakov hosed me down with water meanwhile the guy is like I want to leave these people and just go far away and I'm standing there in the middle of so many tell and I'm covered in god only knows what and my husband who never touches me in public just gave me a big hug and I just, to that day, it's this day, like that moment in time is just sealed as like. That's beautiful. You gave, you gave, <laughs> gave me a hug. You gave me exactly yes, what I. Disgusting. I was so wretched. I'm so miserable. I'm so hot. And I'm standing there in this dangerous intersection. And, and my husband just comes. And I wouldn't have given me a hug. I would just be like. <laughs> You're on your own, babe. <laughs> but he just gave me, like, he just came out and, and hosed me down and just gave me a big hug. And it was just so, like, sweet because that was what I needed right. at that time. Right. You know, that was exactly what I needed at that time, which brings us to um, languages of love. Mm. Um, so I think, I haven't read the book yet, I, I have to say, but um, we have discovered that there are different languages of yeah. love yeah so there's there's touch and there's affirmations and there's service um what's the other ones um quality time and presence yeah okay so if you spontaneously which one is yours words words like words like of affection yeah um, yeah probably words anything in words you also have all of the other stuff but i think sure. that definitely you know um i feel especially now that, that i'm like in a midlife crisis whatever i don't know what you call it no it's not midlife it's past that menopause anyway i've been there done that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so i think menopause is like the no bullshit era Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. you you, you like a lot of things that you put up with when you were younger and you had like little kids and more distractions, mm -hmm. you don't put it up with it anymore. So, so like I know today that I really need to talk with my husband. I need this time that we talk with each other. Right. Much more than any other things, you know, that was like really good that last night we had to go back and the road the road was blocked so we had to go all the way detour 
and we had a, like an hour and 15 minutes to talk nice after we See, ate got to <laughs> so we got <laughs> and and i felt when when we arrived here i was exhausted but i felt like so comforted and so like filled that i had this talk right i really needed the talk wow nice. so i think like it's really important to to acknowledge all the other languages of love, mm -hmm. you know, because like Boz, he tends to give more like on the serving side. Like for him, it's like he'll do the dishes, he'll do the laundry, he'll, he'll do stuff in the house. And that's like his way of expressing love. And like for me, okay, so you do dishes a lot. <laughs> but I've learned... To appreciate it, to, right. you know, to even to mention it, to, to say something about it, because it's another way of him to give love. But for him, like, but it's interesting, like, this is his way to give, but to accept, he likes touch a lot. Mm -hmm. So we have like a way of giving and a way of receiving. Totally, totally, totally. And the way that I might give is the way that I would want to receive. Right? Yeah. Like, we don't make that distinction that there's different people who have different ways of accepting, of, of wanting love. So we would give over what we want to receive. Right. Not necessarily right. what the other one wants. And, and that awareness, you know, is, 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 is very interesting because when, I, when we were younger, when my kids were younger, so they, 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 they're touching me all, all day. And the last thing I want to be is touch. Don't touch me. But then if I say, like, back off, you know, like I've been touched and patted. And then it, 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 would, it would be like, it's a personal thing. Like, I'm rejecting you. But I'm right. not. I'm just right. rejecting being touched because I've been over touched. Don't just, just don't. And it's you know like it, it's not like a rejection you know like if i'm rejecting your method of how you want to be loved it's not a rejection of you necessarily right it's just you know the circumstances or or that's not even my way mm -hmm. you know that's not my way and i think like you, the more you delve into it the more you know what you want and what the other person wants then you can be aware to give it right not necessarily what they want like I, I i don't know if it's my language but i love presents so i'm always giving you know and 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 parties and whatever and, and yakov is just like i said okay what do you want for birthday let's do it <laughs> and and was just like yeah give me a cake <laughs> and and leave me alone <laughs> and to me that just seems so what that's how you're gonna show that's how you want to celebrate your birthday and he's like yeah and i'm like no we have to do it we have to do this and 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 i did one time for him like i went all out and and he was just so annoyed and and every moment he's just getting more and more annoyed and i'm like and i took a person i'm like you know here i am I, I did all this work i did all this thought i put in so much effort into this and you're it's like you're rejecting me you know, like, like, like when he would touch me and I'd just be like, dude, no, like I've been touched too much. And so it's not like a rejection of the person and it's not even a personal thing. It's just, you know, be aware to what the person is going through at that time and what they need to receive and not right. necessarily what you want to get. Right. So I think, I think that's like a, like the difference maybe between love and romance, like, love is where I'm going to look at my partner and say what is good for you what do you want even though I don't necessarily want it um what is good for you how can I love you yeah as opposed to oh the flowers and the this and that like sometimes romance can be like especially on screen I think more on screen than in real life but I think that, like it, it has this like cliche um, oh, I'm gonna buy you roses, or I'm gonna, and it's just like not real, you know. Like they don't address that this might not be what I want. I might be allergic to flowers, you know. <laughs> um. So, what else? What's what? What do you think? Why do you think there's so many couples today 
that aren't that are getting divorced oh wow like like we know all these things we have all these tools available to us you know and yet statistics are showing that you know at at least one in three marriages are going to end up closer probably to two-thirds are ending up in divorce so Mm -hmm. why why do you think that you know we have so many tools available to make things work there's so many therapies there's so many um ways of resolving conflict and addressing conflict why do you think that there's so many marriages that are ending in divorce well um i'm not sure there's like one reason okay um i think that many people they're all they are all these resources around us but to actually use the resource (laughs) you know uh you have to make a step you have to make a commitment you have to invest money and time in it Mm -hmm. and people seem not to have time for that you know they'll have time to get a divorce they'll invest in a lawyer but um not one and not you know i've i've met these people who didn't invest in like just making making the relationship work better because also, there's this idea that um, I'll be better off on my own, mm-hmm. which is sometimes true. Some people are better off on their own. <laughs> they make it. But but sometimes uh, uh, I hear also that a lot of people who did get divorced, they say, if I would have invested in my marriage, I would be still married today. Okay. And... Some, you know, so you have to be very, you have to have a, like a very uh, focused mindset on being able to get help and on your values and on your values that, that this is something that important is something to you and not only for the kids, but for yourself. Right. A lot of people tend to put themselves last, last. especially mothers. Oh my God. Yeah. And we do it in motherhood, but we also do it in couplehood. In couplehood. For sure. So we say, okay, so so th- we know this is an issue, but I don't have time to address it right now. <laughs> or, I, don't, I don't want to address it. I don't, I don't want to address it. I don't, strength to right, address it. Right, right. And I think when you realize that you have so much to benefit from a good relationship, wow. you know, it's also when you don't have a good relationship, so you don't know what you're missing out on. (laughs) You can just imagine stuff, but you can say, okay, so they have a good relationship, but I will never have that with my husband. You know, you you don't see it happening to you. You don't see that, that you can really change. You can really make a difference. And I know because I went through a crisis in my marriage, because I know how bad it was and how, better it is now it's still i i want to have it better right you know for sure but but it's much better than what it was because we we got a lot of help in different stages and and it's something that we're always working on right but i think when you don't have it you you sort of like don't believe it could get better sometimes you don't think it's worth the investment because you don't know what it could be like and and you miss out and sometimes it's just unintentionally, you, you know, they don't, people don't give it so much thought. Right. And then they're just like, okay, I, at some point you say, I just can't deal with this anymore. And you want to get a divorce. Besides, there are also, I think, objective reasons that, that people get divorced. Like if somebody's like very controlling in a relationship or something like that, I'm not saying you can't live with them. <laughs> you can, because uh, the people who tend to be controlling, they can be really sweethearts if you know how to treat them right. They- Interesting thought. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the, need, <clears throat> the need, it's a need to control. Mm. And when you know how to answer the need, they don't need to control. <laughs> <laughs> you know they, they usually these, these are people who need the respect who need to be the ones who lead in the marriage who say the last word so not every woman it's it's right for her to be in this kind of relationship but sometimes 
Yeah, there are some women who find it in the beginning of their of the relationship. The reason they fell in love with this kind of guy is because they they want they didn't want to do the decisions themselves. They wanted somebody to lead their life. They wanted somebody yeah. who takes responsibility. Yeah. And then they find out they they are married to this kind of person, and then freaks them out. And I say, what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make any decisions of myself, or or how I'm gonna live this way? But there are ways to work even with like really troubled people. I'm a believer. Yeah, <laughs> I believe in this. Really, I I learned marriage coaching, and mm -hmm. it's something that I also felt also about my parents' marriage, which was a very conflicted marriage. But you know, sometimes I I felt like if they would only accept each other's traits, okay. and if my father would be like a stay home mom. And we wouldn't mm. have to go out to work. And my mom would be this career lady and making tons of money. And my father didn't have to work at all. They would have a beautiful relationship because they each would be in the right place. Right. And, and each would respect each other for what they're doing. But my mom expecting my father to go out and keep a job and hold it steady and stuff like that. When he just wanted to be at home with us kids. Right. And that didn't happen and she mm. was always uh you know <laughs> disappointed in him well, I, th I think a little bit Aww. plus also working on the on um the, the communication the communication that's also really important because when you lose that you lose so much everything everything uh, wow oh just the gosh. ability to say like what you need what mm -hmm. you want mm -hmm. And sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes people don't even share that. They mm -hmm. like, like stay within themselves, right. and and then and then like the other person should know what I want <laughs> without me telling them. Right, <gasps> that's um, a stupid myth. I'm a mess, I'm a mess, and it's something I have to work on myself. Like I'm, I have to communicate myself and and really not make that assumption that. You know, Jacob knows what I want, right? Um, and it's it's something that I'm I'm working on. Um, I just I remember like there's so many you know couples that you look at, and it, it, again the myth. Oh, they've got this perfect marriage. Oh, you know they've got this. I would and and I wish he could be like her, and and you know I wish she could be like him, and and it's such BS. It's such false, like garbage because. You don't know what goes on with other people. You don't right. know what people have gone through, what people have done, what people do to make them work. I remember um, they, my parents' marriage. I, I love seeing them now. They have their moments. They do. Um, but it's gone through such a metamorphosis, my parents' marriage. Um, you know, now they, they, they do. They totally have their moments and they get on each other's nerves and whatever. They, they have this, like, understanding. Um, you know, they used to like, and also they used to fight a lot. Um, and, you know, Jacob and I both said, we do not want marriages like our parents. So you don't have the marriage prototype on what to fall back on. You have to build your own marriage. You have to build your own marriage prototype. There's couples that we look at today and they're like, yeah, ah, uh, you know, like they don't, they, obviously they don't have this perfect marriage, but they have this love between them. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It's so beautiful to see. Like, we're like, okay, this is where we want to be. This is, this is our goal, yeah. you know, and we might not be that couple because we're not that couple, but the love that exists between those two, um, we want right. that. Right. You need something to aspire you know, to. That is what we want to go to. Yeah. And I hope, I mean, our kids obviously see us at the best times and at the worst times. But I always hope that my kids look at us and they say, okay, they had, you know, they had their trials, they had their tribulations, they had their ups, they had their downs, but that type of marriage is what I want to have. And, and even when I'm like so angry and so I'm like smoking in a cigarette, I, I come back to that point where I'm like, okay, this is how I, I want my children to see me. Yeah. This is how I want. This is the example of my children. How I am is how my children are going to be as spouses. Do I want them to be that way? No. So, like, you know, 
<laughs> it doesn't always work. I have to no, say. it doesn't always work. But I, I can tell you a comforting thought. That's, That's something I learned in psychology. Okay, is that each couple has their own, uh, you know, fights and uh, disagreements and stuff like that. Right. It's not about how much you fight or not. Yes. It's it's about keeping the same ratio over time. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Same ratio. <laughs> I want a higher ratio of, of non-fighting to fighting. Yeah, you want the higher ratio. We want to go there really slowly because, like, really big changes uh, that can break up a marriage. Mm. There's a story I saw our psychologist told us in the, in the class, and he said there was this couple that every morning they had the same argument. The the wife would call to her husband who was in the shower when do you want me to make your eggs and he would say make them now and then he would come down after he's dressed and everything and the eggs were cold and he used to say to his wife why the eggs cold and i was so angry and his his mother was living with them and she would get on his case he said why are you insulting your wife <laughs> I'm like every morning they had the same argument. Oh my god! And uh, somebody, like a psychologist, uh, well-meaning, told the wife, "Don't ask him anything." The minute he shows up in the kitchen making his eggs, mm -hmm. so uh, after two months they got a divorce. <laughs> there was no fighting. <laughs> there was no fighting involved. Oh my god. But, you know, there's something like about the routine routines yeah and and fighting is part of marriage disagreement is part of marriage and i think what what for me i find that i tell myself is that oh they'll, they'll see me like going off the handle with boss but i want them to see me making up making up as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and totally. lovey-dovey and all of those stuff as well because because that's a picture I want them to have of marriage. Right. And uh, I wish, <laughs> I mean, Lucy, uh, I, Lucy wouldn't be that funny if it wouldn't accentuate, accentuate is a good word? Exaggerate, exaggerate the, the conflicts, mm -hmm. you know? But Sometimes, like, I wish that we would see, like, the real-life conflicts more. Mm. And I think today's shows, they have that a little bit right. more. They have, like, more, oh, that's, like, real life. Right, <laughs> right, right. Um, that's interesting. It's interesting. I think we should um, wrap this up. Yeah, now. we are totally wrapping this up. anything on our list that we forgot to talk about? Um, no. no, I think we got everything. Okay, good. So, thank you so, for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you want more <laughs> videos, hit subscribe because we are, yeah, we are and give us a thumbs up and comment and, and like comment. Yeah, we want we we want to interact with you guys. Tell us about shows that you want us to talk about. Talk about us about, about your relationship. Yeah, what works for you guys. We're open to tips. <laughs> we we've we've just discovered we don't have the perfect marriage. So if you have tips that will help our marriage be better, please yeah tell us, and we will see you next week on oh, the, the show. show. Thank <laughs> you.